Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome back to FFT, Food for Thought Ministries, where we move with purpose in our walk with Christ over here. My name is Rokisha Muhammad, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been with me since day one, welcome back, family. All right, you guys, I'm here with another Bible review, and the Bible that I am reviewing today is the A.W. Tozer Bible. Okay, he's a very popular author. He has a lot of Christian books, and I mean a lot. Um, I was able to um, listen to the audio book of The Pursuit of God. Absolutely loved it. Free on YouTube, okay? Um, I'm going to listen to it again. It was about three hours, almost three hours, but I'm going to listen to it again, and this time take notes because I was just in the bed and listened to it, and um, it was absolutely awesome. Highly recommend that. Um, so here, let's get into this review. So again, A.W. Tozer, this is the Bible. It is in the KJV translation. And right here, it says, um, The word of God, well understood and religiously obeyed, is the shortest route to spiritual perfection. And that's a quote by A.W. Tozer, Tozer. Let's take a look at the back. Again, this is the KJV translation, and it says, This unique volume features over 500 key selections and teachings carefully drawn from more than 40 writings by dynamic pastor, preacher, and teacher Aidan Wilson Tozer. The selections are taken from bestsellers like The Pursuit of God, that's the one I listen to free on YouTube, and The Attributes of God, as well as lesser known works such as the size of the soul and the root of the righteous so here is um basically some of the features that we will see when we get inside it says each excerpt appears in one of three categories the first one is going to be on scripture that's what it's called and it's over 365 selections each sharing the page with the bible verse to which it refers add depth and insight to a particular verse's application for the believer. You know, I love this application part, right? Then we have reflections. There's going to be more than 100 excerpts that apply the deep meaning of the Christian faith to everyday life. Come on now. Then we have challenges, which is there are going to be nearly 100 entries tied to scripture that exhort the reader to resist complacency, complacency in particular areas of ones living out the word in the world. Come on. So the special special features here, put it down a bit. It says brief biography of A.W. Tozer, over 500 Tozer selections. You're going to get book introductions. The word of Christ is in red. You're going to get a concordance and you're going to get maps. And this is published by Hendrickson Bibles, okay? And this is just us, uh, whatever that is. <laughs> Print size and red letter. That's what it's showing you. And I believe it's a nine point font. I believe, I'm not sure, I, I don't know. But I like large font. It's not super big, but it's definitely readable. It's definitely clear. So it's not gonna have to go into my giveaway pile. Here is the ISBN number for you all. If you're looking for this, I got this off of Amazon for about, I think, 48 bucks or something like that. Do have Prime, so I didn't have to pay for shipping. So, yeah, you might can find it cheaper used. So, you know, check it on out. It is a hard cover. It has a paper and the book looks exactly like the cover. So I do like that. This is what the spine looks like right here. Alrighty, King James Version by Hendrickson Bibles. I'm just going to leave the cover off for right now. So let's get into it. So we have here just a paper paste down. We have a picture 
of A.W. Tozer. Cover sheet. Another cover sheet. KJV Henderson. 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 We have here the copyright page. Printed in China. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then we have over here the biography of A.W. Tozer. So you want to read about him. Okay. We have the Epistles Dedicatory. The Most High and Mighty Prince James. Pages are very, very, very thin. Very thin. Here we have the Table of Contents. We have Old Testament and New Testament. I am loving the theme, though. I like the way that it's um, printed out. Pretty simple, though. Over here, we have the Book of the Bible in alphabetical order. All right. And now we are getting into the Old Testament. And I do like the way they have the pages looking like old, distressed looking. Um, I don't know what this look is, but it's like a tan, tannish brown. And this crimson red color goes very well. I don't know if, I don't know if the color is picking up in the film. But here we are. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? So here, this is what the book introductions look like. This is the book introduction to Genesis. You're going to get your background information. You're going to get the message. You're going to get the time frame. And then you're going to get you a brief outline here. All right. So these are each book, each 66 books is going to come with the introduction. And then you turn the page and we are now into the text. As you can see, it is two columns. It is verse by verse. We do have side column references. And we have some, um, look like some footnotes right down here. And then here are the things that the back of the book talked about, which was on scripture, the challenge, and the reflections. So this is going to be spread on out. Let me just put it down so you get a better look at this. We are going to read one or two of these. You know how I do, just so you can get a feel. Um, so this one, like it stated, is dealing with Genesis 1 and 1. Of course, we are in Genesis 1, the creation. So it's going to give you scripture on this one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It gives you a little background. And this is coming from his book, the attributes of God too. So this is, if you're looking for this, if you like this, you might want to pick that book up. All right. And then over here, we have a reflection that you can probably use for a devotional or application. And again, this was in the, his book, the attributes of God one. All right. So that's a beautiful thing. If you like what you're seeing, you can go and purchase those books. And then here, the challenge here is still dealing with Genesis one. This is came from the pursuit of God. All right. It does look like it is line matched. Okay. Again, here is a closer look at the footnotes here. Just right laid right down at the bottom. And we do see the side column references again. So that's pretty much the layout is pretty simple. So let's find something to read through. Okay, let's check out another. These are not on every single, like see, there's, it's not on every single page, but they are scattered and sprinkled throughout. You do get your um, subheadings, so you know what you're about to read. The Descendants of Adam, I love that. You have the chapter headings in, in red, that crimson color. Alrighty, so let's get to some poetry. Let's see what that's looking like because this is pretty much the layout of the Bible opened up pretty flat. Okay, here is the book of Psalms. Alrighty, let's see here. This is what the introduction looks like for the book of Psalms. You got your background information again, the message and the time. 
and then you have the outline here. Okay, so each book will have that. Again, you have your reflection. Here's another reflection. And with this one, it's telling you, sorry for the wiggle, it came from the book, The Warfare of the Spirit. And over here, this one came from God's Pursuit of Man. So all his books are sprinkled, excerpts of his book are sprinkled throughout this Bible, which makes it very um, interesting and fruitful, okay? Very fruitful. And they all line up and agree with the scriptures. So that's what I like about this Bible. So let's see. Let's find something to read. Hmm. What are we going to read, Holy Spirit? What are we going to read? Read something. It's Matthew. And here is the red letter. I hope you can see that. This is what the red letter is looking like. Again, I believe this might be a nine point font. Nine point font. It doesn't look like an eight or eight and a half. It looks a little bigger than that to me. And I'm a type of girl that like 12, 14, 15 font. So I can read this. So it's it's okay. The reading is pretty fair. It's pretty fair. I would prefer to be bigger, but it's okay. I can do it. Just let me see the red um, letter here. Hopefully you can see it. The red letter fonts. Again, verse by verse. Two columns. Side column references. So what am I going to read? And then I'm going to close this out. Let's see. I want another page with everything on it. Give me a second. I'm trying to find something, y'all. And then I'm going to end this, okay? Let's see here. Okay, let's just read this one. So this one here, let's just start with this challenge. read what this challenge is saying hopefully you guys can see this hopefully okay so it says challenges for the christian death is a journey to the two inch let me start over for the christian death is a journey to the eternal world it is a victory a reset a delight i am sure my small amount of physical suffering in life has been my has been mild compared to Paul's, but I think when he told the Philippians, "For to me to live in Christ and to die is gain," desire to de desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Philippians one verses twenty one and twenty three. The more a Christian suffers in the body, the more he or she thinks about the triumph of going home to heaven and that's found in his book jesus is victory so let's go ahead and read this scripture right here well first let's go and read philippians 2 and 5 okay and then we'll come back so we can have you know to see how it kind of flows so scripture 2 and 5 for philippians are we in 2 no let's go to philippians 2 and 5 so this is not two, this is one. Okay, two and five is right here. So we are in chapter two, verse five. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. All right, so that's the scripture we're going to read according to this right here, what this scripture is about. So let me get you all the way in here and let's read it and let's see what it do. So it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, there's the scripture right there. So it says, while our thoughts stir our feelings and thus strongly influence our wills, it is yet true that the will can be and should be masters of our thoughts. Every normal person can determine what he will think about 
Of course, the troubled or, tr or tempted man may find his thoughts somewhat difficult to control. And even while he is concentrating upon a worthy object, wild and fugitive thought may play over his mind like heat lightning on a summer evening. These are likely to be more bothersome than harmful and in the long run do not make much difference one way or another. The best way to control our thoughts is to offer the mind to God in complete surrender. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will accept it and take control of it immediately. Wow. You see this application? Then it will be relatively easy to think on spiritual things, especially if we train our thoughts by long periods of daily prayer. Amen. Long practice in the art of mental prayer. That is taking to God inwardly as we work or travel will help to form the habit of holy thought. My Lord, the best way of all is to quote, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. For to have the mind of Christ is to have good and pure thoughts when always. Come on, somebody. I like it. Okay. I see you, Tozer. I see you. So let's see. So we did scripture. We did challenge. We still need to do one more, right? What was it called, though? Reflection. Okay, let's just do this reflection since it's right here. Let's just do this reflection, and then, then I'm out. I'm out. Okay, so let's see what this says. This is a reflection. Um, so, it says, yes, these plain people, these believing people, will tell you that God created the flowers to be beautiful and the birds to sing so that men and women could enjoy them. The scientists with an entirely different kind of perspective would never admit that the scientists contend that the birds sing for a totally different reason. It is the male bird that sings and he sings only to attract the female so that they may nest and procreate, he tells us. It is simply biological. It is at this point that I ask the scientists, why doesn't the bird just squeak or groan or quarrel? Why does he have to sing and warble and, and harmonize as though he had been tuned to a harp? I think the answer is plain. It is because God made him to sing. If I were a male bird and wanted to attract a female, I could turn handsprings or do any number of tricks. But why does the bird sing so beautifully? It is because the God who made him is the chief musician of the universe. He is the composer of the cosmo. He made the harp and those little throats and the feathers around them and said, go and sing. Come on, somebody. Thankfully, the birds obeyed and they have been singing and praising God ever since they were created. Hallelujah. The scientific man may protest and say, no, no, but my heart tells me that it is so. And the Bible declares that it is so. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Ecclesiastics 3 and 11. And we can find this in the book, Whatever Happened to Worship. All right. Okay, y'all. So y'all got a little taste. You got a little taste. And that was just some random, you know, picks. So, uh-oh. Hope you enjoyed this little review. Okay, let's take a look at the concordance. Here is the concordance. Okay. It seemed to be not too exhausted, but you got one. This is actually a nice size. You have a concordance here. It is two columns. Okay. So that's nice. So we have a concordance here. Let's get on past this.
and then we have the citations of Tozer's work. So all those three different reflections, challenges, and scripture, these is where they are cited at. So if you are liking, <clears throat> excuse me, um, what you what you was reading, it gives all his cited work here. Okay, all the different books. So that's good, right? And let's see what else. We do have a couple of maps, just a blank page here. <clears throat> Excuse me, then we have a map here. It's kind of shiny, but it's not. It's all right. It's colorful. Pretty, pretty. It's another map. Exodus and Conquest of Canaan. Another map here. Another map here. Jerusalem and the Temple in Old Testament times. Got your nice little key here. Jerusalem, the Temple in New Testament times. You see the difference. Okay. And this last map here. All right. <clears throat> and then we just have a cardstock page and a paper paste down. All right. So that's what it is, family. Again, this is the A.W. Tozer Bible. It is in the KJV translation. Here's one more look at the spine. Hardcover. Got it on Amazon. About 48 bucks. Nothing on the back. All right. No gilding at all. And there is no ribbon. But there is a, what is this? Look like a gray colorish head and tail band. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you soon. God bless. Pray for me as I pray for you. Bye-bye now.